Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know what they say. All good things must come to an end. And also, incredibly long games also must fi finally end for my own sanity. And so it is here tonight. The combat has ended. But we are here to do the epilogue segment of Baldur's Gate 3. I want them to understand we are about to get our final conversations with everybody. See what everyone is up to, what they've come, you know, what's what's happened to all of them since the end of the game. And go from there. So I think first thing we'll do, we'll talk to Scratch, shall we? I'm sure Scratch has something to tell us. So I'm gonna take a potion of animal talking. Or I'm not, because they removed all potions from my inventory. Where's the camp chest? I actually don't remember where the camp chest is in the original camp. It's been so long since I've been here. I don't remember where the hell it is. Anyone remember where the chest is? A chest of grateful words? I want to see what that is later. But where's the camp chest? Or is there no camp chest so I can't talk to Scratch? This is originally where Maul was, no? Look who's here. Look who's here. He's got his own place set up. This was didn't exist before. Wow, he's got a, a, a cool place going here. Interesting. It's by the cave. I'm gonna come back and talk to him, but where is where's the cave? There's a cave? I mean, it's been months since I've been in this camp, so I don't remember it at all. There's a freaking cave over here. The fuck is a cave? Is it a cave? Aha. There you are, my mortal friend. Oh, I guess we're gonna find out what Gale did. <laughs> Here, oh, it's a clothing chest. What? Clothing chest. Whoa! Well, for beating the game, they give you basically any kind of clothing you want and any kind of coloring you want. Look at this. Damn, that's like every kind of normal clothing, right? Probably. Okay. Well, that's neat. Didn't know that. The music is nice right now. Oh, the volume of my headphones here a little bit. Here's Shadowheart walking around. I'll talk to her in a sec. Where the fuck is the chest? There, is there no chest? Did they remove it? So now I can't get a potion of talking to animals, so I can't talk to Scratch for the finale? Well, already, that's seven or eight demerits tonight. If this is the case. If there is no chest and I can't get my potions, they've already fucked up the ending. I don't see a chest anywhere, so I think they fucked up the ending. Did they not? There is no chest, so I, they fucked up the ending. They took all my potions out of my inventory, so I can't talk to animals, and now I'm fucked. I can't talk to Scratch. Well, Scratch, I'll give you your final scritches. Sorry that I can't talk to you. I'd like to have a conversation with you, but the game is fucking stupid as shit. Come over here. Where is he? Oh, God, Will. Are you doing that shit again? Didn't have enough last time? Where is, uh, where's Scratch go? He was here. Well, now I don't see him. All right, I guess we'll just go around in order. We'll talk to everyone. Oh, there's Scratch. Here he is. He's got the relic. Strange in your old friend's mouth. What is it? He's got the relic. Let's see. I'm so glad Withers provided my favorite companion. <laughs> Scratch barks merrily in something like agreement. If only we knew. He seems excited in a way you recognize. He wants you to throw the object he's dropped. But it isn't a ball. It's the astral prism. That's fine. Throw it. Who fucking cares about that thing? He was a good dog. The whole game, he was a good dog. Never once did he misbehave. What a good boy. <laughs> Where did you find this? He whines. Let's talk. More threat. The... Inert astral prism. Can I pick it up? Yes, it's inert now. Can I throw it? The artifact once so powerful, now it's empty and quiet. Ready, Scratch?
He's playing with it. Ah, he grabbed it. He's playing with it. <laughs> well, you enjoy, Scratch. Enjoy the inert astral prism. I don't need it anymore. Okay, let's talk to everyone. We got uh, Shadowheart first. Starting to wonder if you'd show up. Are you joking? I've been counting down the days. I had reservations, actually. I thought it might be too bittersweet. Of course I did. You lot hardly managed without me. Shadowheart, isn't it? <laughs> be a dick. I was wondering the same of you. I didn't think you wanted to be within arm's reach of me again. All right, here we go. We'll be nice. Honestly, so have I. Oh, come here, will you? It's been forever. A nice hug between friends. How nice. Hmm. You feel a little more substantial than before. Less camping and scrounging off the land, I You just called it. me fat. You Can you believe that? You'd say that again. I slept under the stars enough for one lifetime. Are you calling me chubby? I'll say, I'll take that as a compliment and you look good too. I suppose I do, don't I? <laughs> I'm glad you seem well. Trudy. The feeling's mutual. Uh, let's not get too sentimental. Tell me what you've been up to. Yeah, let's hear what she's been up to. Wondering, mostly. The adventuring life is almost a tonic when you're not constantly threatened by brain monsters and cultists. I can finally see the world beyond the cloister. Where have you been? What have you seen? I thought you might crave a little peace and quiet after all that happened. Say that. Peace and quiet will still be there waiting once I've lived a little. <laughs> Though, don't get me wrong. I've got a little cottage with a garden and animals in mind already. One of my first stops was the House of the Moon in Waterdeep. It's the largest temple of Saluna in existence. It seemed like the perfect spot to reflect on my parents, on where they came from, and where I came from too, I suppose. Hard to imagine, isn't it? Me, of all people, in the lair of the Moon Witch herself. Gods, you're truest act of heroism was putting up with all that char and drivel I was spouting for so <laughs> I'm gonna say your parents would be proud of you. Oh, I know they are. I can still sense them, I think. And one day we'll be reunited. Alright, so what else have you been doing? Well, I've had run-ins with my former fellow Sharans on a couple of occasions. Word seems to have spread of what happened at the cloister. Now other chapters of Shah worship see me as a oh, that target sucks. to Fucking assholes. offer up to their lady as a sacrifice. Leave her alone, man. Don't worry. I know their tired old tricks better than anyone. They'll need more than a hooded cloak and poison blade to best me. Especially when I have a friend on the inside keeping me abreast of their predictable little plans. Oh, wait a minute. I was just going to say, Nocturne stayed inside of the Shar, and now she's helping her? That's interesting. None other. The matter of her faith and allegiances remains... complicated, let's say. But she is still my oldest friend. I have hopes that perhaps she might turn from Shar entirely, given time. But that's a decision she will have to make for herself. If that day comes, I'll be ready. Hmm. Okay, very interesting. Uh, John Smith, yes, I see you in chat. Why are you tagging me and demanding that I notice you? I I'm trying to enjoy the end of my 140-hour playthrough, thanks. Uh, I received a dollar tip. First contribution of the night. From Chimp Thoughts. Since I played St Stellar Blade Demo, I thought the game was good. Comment reminds me of Nier Automata. Okay. He said, thank you so much for the amazing content. Well, thank you, Kimp Thoughts. What a name. Oops. First contribution of the night. Thank you so much. Why can't I type tonight? I don't know. Here we go. That's better. Okay, uh, so, you must be wondering what I've been doing. Must I? 
Ah. You presume a great deal. <laughs> I'm joking. Of course I want to know. Tell me all. No, I refuse. Still, you've been living a quiet existence. You're glad for it? Boast of adventures you've embarked on since you parted ways with her. Oh, you know this and that. Playing it coy, are The Sounds like a girl I used to know. But you're entitled to your secrets. At least until the festivities loosen your tongue a bit. Hopefully, these meetups will become a regular occurrence. It's not that I miss the tadpoles, but at least it brought us together. Now we've got to make the extra effort ourselves. I mean, it's true, like, none of them would have ever been together. They were all from completely different walks of life and everything. And only because they were infected with the illithid, and then they got in contact with the artifact, that they really stuck together, right? And had that association. Otherwise, they probably would have all been... A lot of them would have been enemies and stuff, right? Uh, if I could play it again, what build would I try? Whatever build is the fastest playthrough possible. So if you can beat the game in, like, ten minutes, that's the build I would pick. Dark Gaming says if you recruited the owl bear, it would be grown up and traveling with Shart. Oh, Shart. I like how they call her Shart. Her name's Shadowheart, not Shart. It's disgusting. But anyway, that's interesting. You know, I wanted to save the owl bear. It didn't work. Remember, I tried to tame it, and it just it didn't work. It ran away. Okay. Weeble says, when I open my chat, it's asking me if I want to renew my membership. I didn't buy one. Was I gifted? I don't know. Weebles, you're asking the wrong person. I have no idea how to tell who was gifted and who wasn't. At one point, a ton of people were gifted memberships a couple months ago. So it's very possible that, yes, you had a gifted one and didn't even realize it. Uh, don't worry, we'll keep in touch. Getting a group of friends to regularly agree to a time and place can prove challenging. Don't remind me. Someone's always got somewhere else to be. But let's do our best, all the same. After all, we've faced down bigger threats than wrangling together a few social calendars. All right, that's our conversation with her. Don't be a stranger. So honestly, eh, not great, right? I mean, it's nice to know that she's she is a Saluni or Salune or Sa Salunibi uh, follower now, and she's doing some fun stuff for herself. But she didn't have a very interesting story, honestly. It was kind of boring. All right, let's keep going. Shall we talk? I'm interested in Gale. It looks like he became a god. And as a god, he's just standing back here by himself, not partaking. So let's see what's going on with him. Goodness. Was Faerun always so... dull? Still, at least the company was worth the trip. If not the view. Your magic feels different, more primal somehow. Is this Karsus's powers at work? Not to be overly pedantic. But they are my powers now. <laughs> I imagine you're wondering how all this came to be. The finer points of divine ascension are beyond mortal comprehension, I'm afraid, but I can provide a rudimentary sequence of events. First, I retrieved the crown of Carsus and reforged it using a series of precise and highly complex netherese incantations. Then, I used it. As you know, the orb within me was the half-formed Karsai Weaver. Magic left incomplete by Karsus' self-destruction. I finished it. Using the crown of Karsus, I turned it into a new form of magic, fused with my being, driven by my purpose. Hmm. And then I put it to work. As expected, Mistra was unwilling to hand over the reins of the weave, so... I've claimed dominion over another area which I've... passing familiarity. Ambition. So, Mistra still exists and is still in control of the Weave, but now he's a god of something different. So he made himself a god, couldn't do what he originally wanted to do, but he turned that bomb in his chest into a fuel source to create a new kind of divine power. So here you go. Good to challenge Mistra would have been a greater folly even than Karsus's. <coughs> Mm, I don't recall saying that I'd given up. I can't say this much for now. Mistra is welcome to her dominion. My aims are set a little higher than offering cursory blessings to just any half-decent spellcaster. I exist not to bestow favors on my followers, but to inspire them to seize their destinies for themselves, exactly as I did. I'm their proof. So he's a muse. 
He's going to be amused to other magic users. Proof their hopes are not barren wastes, but the loamy soil in which their future achievements will flourish. Proof that with ambition, anything is possible. Interesting. Yeah, I know for a fact there's other endings. I saw a cutscene of an ending where he just goes off with Mistra and he becomes her chosen. And now this was easy. this I would assume this is one of his better endings, you know. You're no different than any other god letting mortals do all the work. Interesting. You help mortals help themselves. What are those evil ambitions? Do you encourage them? Oh, that's an interesting question, actually. Let's see what he has to say. I am the god of ambition. None of the consequences of ambition. Nor am I the arbiter of good or evil, for that matter. At best, those concerned with the consequences of their actions might consult with Savras, god of divination. Though these days, I doubt it'd see them coming. <laughs> I am ambition incarnate. As indistinguishable from that most potent sensation as Mistra herself is from the weave. And word is spreading. Hmm. There are already several shrines in my honor scattered across the outer reaches of Thay, and rumors of a very prominent temple under construction in Arm. This is only the beginning. Uh, he just he's dying to be worshipped. Uh, good evening, Chrome Abyss. Carlton says, I told Gil not to be a god. This is all new for me. In mind, he becomes a traveling magic teacher and maintains a good relationship with Mistra. See? I think every these characters all have different outcomes depending on your choices during the game, which is kind of neat. What can I say, Gail? I'm impressed. I thought you would be. <laughs> now, divine as my company undoubtedly is, I have an eternity to catch up with you. A luxury few others at this party possess. Don't let me deprive them of your company. Or mine, for that matter. It's not every day a newborn god shows up to the reunion. Uh. Oh, that's cool. The day I pray to you, Gail, is Look. the day up is down, left is right, and Tressim's a cat. <laughs> so very stubborn. His cat is here. And don't you forget it. What does she well, think? Well, there he is. Gale in all his glory. I hope you're happy. Me? I didn't do it. Ambition. <laughs> Have you ever heard anything more ridiculous? She sounds like Angela Lansbury. <laughs> I agree. He's not who he used to be. I think he'll make an excellent addition to the Pantheon. Ambition. Uh, aspiration. Greed and hubris is all I hear. The Gale I knew wasn't like this. He recognized his mistakes. He was contrite. All he wanted to do was live. Wrong. Unfortunately, Not true. he fell into company that turned his gaze toward foolishness. Yes, I mean you. We didn't do it. That was, It was all his plan to begin with. He even told us that was his plan to begin with. I can't deny part of me wishes I'd stopped him. I don't blame me for Gale's foolishness. He wanted to ascend. He did it. I'm happy for him. Then you're just as mad as he. <laughs> I know there's nothing you could have done to stop him. Not really. Once he decided to learn nothing from his mistakes, what use were either of our protests? Perhaps you'd be willing to come meet Gale's mother sometime? She misses him so... And I know it would do her heart a world of good to discuss her son with someone who knew him as he was. Does Jasper speak like this? No, Jasper has a, a strong Irish accent for some reason. I don't know why. And Carlton says, I suspect the massive variety in the character outcomes are a factor of why the devs decided against DLC, among other things. I'll consider it. See that you mm. do. We'd love to have you. So she lives with the parents Things now. Things have been rather quiet without himself cluttering up the place. Enjoy your party, dear. I've heard you quite deserve a celebration. I like how first she blames you. It's like, dude, this is the guy who messed with Mistra, you know, a goddess and everything. You're going to blame me for him having ambition? I mean, this is how he is. As a person, he was always going to fucking take chances and do crazy shit. I'm not going to be able to stop him. The only thing I could have done is kill him. Is that what you want? You want me to kill the guy? What is this? Baldur's Mouth Gazette? Absolute emergency over. Declares fist. Last illithids routed from sewers. Baldur's Mouth editor resigns. Links to Gortosh regime is unfounded. 
Black Market, Black Magic, Devil's Fee Goods still unaccounted for. Cheris's raconteur Raphael reported dead. Yeah, because we murdered his ass. Solonite outpost decimated by unknown assailant. Now protected by the Sword of Saloon, Dame Aelin. So Dame Aelin has returned to protecting the religious stuff of Saloon in the, in the world. Criminals consolidate. Guild uses rebuilding efforts to expand its power. So the Thieves' Guild is regrowing. Shall we talk to Lazelle next? Sure, why not? She's right here. For two months, I trained the Knights of the Comet. For two more, I skewered Kithraki bellies. And for two more yet, I traveled through Limbo. I never imagined we'd be standing toe-to-toe -to -toe on this day, in this place. Nothing but allies, I always told myself. A necessary partnership. But in spite of every strained word, every barbed glance, seeing you brings me even more pleasure than taking a royal inquisitor's head. Uh, redid her hair, didn't she? Looks like her hair is done differently. Good to see you. You're looking a bit less solid than I expected. Your efforts to topple Blackheart are well underway then. Let's say that. We've spilled blood, gained a foothold in the astral, but still we need allies. And one beyond reckoning has made itself known. Zerith Minyaragi. I have no idea what that means. Yeah, what is that? Not a what, but a who. The immortal god king of the Githzerai. What? An exiled people. Once kin with mine, until the madness of civil war ripped our one sky into two. Huh. Our gish sent word of the rebellion to Minyara gift through the cosmos. He's agreed to pardon. That's me. interesting. It's fallen to me to secure an alliance. That's very interesting. So there's a there's rebels who were split apart from the gift ages ago, and they're gonna come and rejoin her rebels now to form a super rebel alliance. Hold on, the Great Warrior lays out on a diplomatic mission. The best choice for the job, your tongue is as learned as your blade. Let's say that, let's say that. My blade is keen as ever. But it was you who showed me that a proper victory doesn't always require a razor-sharp edge. Sometimes, a sincere plea is more persuasive than a dagger against the neck. Minyara Gith is an ascetic. You reached out in good faith. This is his way. It is in this spirit that I must meet him. Sounds like a plan. And if he refuses, I carry on. Gravity pulls me in but one direction. I am the comet. I will not rest until I burn Vlacket's bones to ash and smash her phylactery to pieces. Good, she's a bitch. My people <laughs> will be free. So, dark... But you've heard that refrain before. Zealous, bossy, insistent. Bleh. All part and parcel of my undeniable charm. So Dark Gaming said that in his ending, Orpheus is still Orpheus, and therefore she travels with him, and he's still the comet, and she's just helping him. Carlton Jr. says, I persuaded Lazelle to be free completely, and she becomes a traveling adventurer instead. A lot less interesting than this plot, but probably overall a happier ending to a character. I don't think so. I think that... Her destiny was to be the, a leader in the comet. Like, that's what she wanted. And so now she's getting what she always wanted, right? So that's cool. Dark Gaming says, if you do an ending where she, where she keeps her loyalty with the queen, she becomes a knight, and then the queen just eats her anyway. That's great. A shame you wouldn't, couldn't be with us in person. It's like talking to a ghost. When will I see you again? Soon. When the comet has risen. When the lich queen has crumbled to dust. I miss this place. More to the point, I miss you. I wouldn't even deny it with Vlacket's vocal blade at my neck. Though, I'd rather it not come to that. Now go, mingle a bit. That's the word, right? Mingle. I'll be back one day. The Overgod himself couldn't keep me away. She's gonna kick Vlacus to ass, become the leader of the Git, and then she's gonna come back in person. There you go. Of course, that'll never happen because they're never making a sequel to this game. But okay. Oh, Tolson, I think I'll uh, I'll wait a bit to talk to him. I think I'll I'll wait till I'm a little more interested. I want to talk to Withers because he has his own place now. 
he rebuilt this wrecked building into his own like little business workshop thing look Volo's Guide to Baldur's Gate signed. Well, Volo's fucking dead, so that doesn't matter. Mind Flare Parasite Specimen, The Book of Willing Souls. What does he have to say? Hey, Withers, what's going on? This one night is like any other, and yet different. Thou art the savior of Baldur's Gate. Until such time it requires saving again. How dost thou feel? Satisfied, I accomplished everything I wanted to do. I did my duty no more or less. I can't help but feel some things have been left undone. I'm getting tired. I might go to bed. I think I caught up with everyone. What comes next? Uh, I guess we talk to him after the fact. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like we talk to him after the fact. To see, like, to end the, the ceremony. Uh, I think some things may be left undone. Let's say that. If thou could only see the paths of fate untaken... <laughs> Thy mind would surely break. Be glad of thy chosen path. It is, after all, thine. Enjoy the revelry of the day. Thou deservest at least that much. I'm assuming, like, he can actually see everything. Like, he can see all the different threads of, like, the multiverse. So he can see the other options, is what they're saying. And he's saying, well, this is actually a pretty good option you got. To be happy with it, you know, don't be sad because there were other ones that were quite quite bad. I think it's what he's trying to get at here, right? Carlton says, I respect that opinion. I feel like a character being constantly brainwashed and told what to do all the time, getting a chance to do what she wants is the best outcome in my opinion anyway. Dark Gaming says, there's an evil ending. If you've killed all of your party members, Withers will get pissed at you because you ruined the party. <laughs> That's what he's pissed at. You know, I made this party. No one showed up because they're all fucking dead. You asshole. We'll return to the party for now. We're not done. I want to talk to more people. I guess this is where we go when we are done. And then we get the true, probably the credits roll, right? After we're done. Oh shit, I walked into the river. I don't want to do that. Take a dump, take a, a, a shower here. The implication is Baldur's Gate 3 is a DD d run. Withers was the dungeon master. You think so? Is that what they're trying to say? What is the chest of grateful words? Oh, it's th it's 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 thank yous from everyone who you helped in the game. Here's a guild letter. To the Hero of the Realms, we followed your adventure closely from the day you fell from that doomed Nautiloid to the final blow that you struck the Netherbrain. We're but a humble guild who preside ourselves in telling stories, not unlike the tales to be written for many years to come, how inspired we have been to witness your feats. We thought to extend a greeting to thank you for adventuring with such creative determination and panache, enough to touch the hearts of each of our, our number, the Guild of Great Genius. We have no idea who that is. The Guild of Great Genius? Farkas. Withers gave me this address, and I said I could consider writing this an update. The Iron Hand Gnomes are nearly beyond help, but I managed to yoke them into something resembling a coherent force for innovation. Well, that's good news. We've been hired to assist in the city's reconstruction, and our steam-powered object motor motorations are helping to move the building supplies in every part of the city. It's nothing, really. I am well, I trust that you are too, and we deserve it after all, don't we? Barkus Root. That's a good ending for them. Oh, the, the Great Genius Guild is Omolum's group? Oh, I didn't even know that. I didn't know what they were called. Art? To an old acquaintance, I write to you from the sunny porch of the Last Light Inn. The light bre breeze blows now and then. People are milling in and out. Builders, visitors, children of all ages, and Halson's care. I can no longer hold a quill or eat without assistance. A kind friend is transcribing this for me. Uh, oh, you remember Art. He was the guy who got hurt, right? Daniel? No. Yes, it was Art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Daniel rejoined with Oliver, promised to me that when the time comes... Has promised to be with me when the time comes. I, I can't read correctly here. And as our old songs drift on the wind ever louder, I know I have met mere days left, but I do not fear it. If not for your hope, this land would have been shrouded in darkness. And I'd still be lost within it. That's right. He was lost in the in the, the darkness. I remember now. Uh, I know that my heart is full of happy, full and happy, and I'm grateful for my last moments. Do visit someday, and if you have time to stop by an old flaming fist's grave, I know I'd love to see you. That's, these are nice. From Valeria. Salutations. I'm writing to request your help in a mysterious case that has arisen since our Bali and Bash a half year ago. Regrettably, I had to take the credit for dispelling the ball cult in your absence, you understand. Oh, right. And I'm working on routing the remaining ballas from our fair city with the newly promoted Blaze Devella Fountainhead in tow, of course. 
So basically, this is the flying elephant, and they're talking about uh, Develop Fountainhead got promoted. The one who we helped with the investigation, right? That's cool. Uh, this has made me a target. A false document bringing my name into ill repute has been made public. And the attendees appetites. He shut up. Uh, an alleged un unpaid bar tab at Elf Song. If you happen to be passing through with a bindle of coin, perhaps you can persuade management of my obvious innocence. Much obliged. Investigator Valeria Sleuth of Helm. Yes, any chance of getting ballast blood out of cloth? My hat's not been the same since the murder tribunal. Good song, good so some of these are actually like happy endings, and some of these are more like comic relief stories, which is nice. Uh, I have received a very generous contribution tonight of $150 from Baldur's Gator 1 of 3. So let's see what Baldur's Gator 1 of 3 has to say. An insanely generous $150 tip. Look at this. Baldur's Gator. So. Looks like we're going to have some rewards. Now, let's be honest here. I think you guys know what hat you want, right? I mean, <laughs> well, I've only worn it literally like every effing day that I've played this game, correct? So I think we know what hat you guys want. I guess we could do a poll for the vest, but let me get the hat, right? Baldur's Gator, what do you mean who? It's Baldur's Gator, everyone knows the Baldur's Gator. You have the Baldur's Gators, the Elden Ringers, the Final Fantasy VII Mughalites, right? Exactly. Here we go. So, what does he have to say? I know it wasn't your cup of tea, but it was fun, and I'm grateful to see you play this. I'm tipping you before you step on the Baldur Gator's hearts with the review. Lol, Baldur's Gator 1 of 3. I wonder if he's saying there's more Baldur's Gators. So there's only three Baldur's Gators in existence? Is that what he's saying there? Maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh, so... The Final Fantarian, Final Fanta Fanta the Final Fantasians, the Baldur's Gators, and the Elden Ringers. There you go. And they're all at war about which game is the best RPG so far this year. Then you got the Persona 3 Reloaders. <laughs> the Persona Reloaders. They like to reload things. Just reload. They never fire them. They just reload them. <laughs> okay. Uh... Let me go ahead and do... Let's do a poll for a vest. Which... Which vest is 140 plus hour long playthrough best? How about the beige, the classic beige? How about the red? How about blue. And how about gold vest. You are the very very best gold vest. I must put you to the test tonight. Oh, gold grind. You're so goddamn dead in the ground now. Gold grind. All right. That's enough of that. Let's uh, go ahead and vote. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, letter from Ravenguard. Hero of Baldur's Gate, vanquisher of the absolute. The city is forever in your debt. For without your valor, your audacity, your sacrifice, it would not know renewal. It is not temples and inns and homes that I speak of, but hearts. Baldur's Gate can never be the city it was before, that it suffered to the absolute's touch, and it is as it should be. The survivors have borne witness to their homes near destruction, and they've come to regret turning a blind eye to the cruelty that Gortash disguised as safety and security. And they understand, just as I have come to understand, that trust, compassion, and unity are the foundation of Baldur's Gate. Our gates are open once more to the disowned and displaced. The Flaming Fist will learn to be true servants of the people. I? Well, 
I'll devote myself to ridding the gate of the shameful fears that allowed evil to enter our homes and sit at our tables. Yours, under, old, old, older, his name was older all along? Older? It sounds like ulcer. It's one letter away from ulcer. Older Raven Guard. Yikes. Okay. Oh, uh, Jay, good evening. Good to have you here for the, f the conclusion. Hey, you, it's Arabella. You remember me, right? Of course I do. Bone Man once said I needed to find balance where the creation meets ruin, where morning meets midnight, the root of all being. Well, that's fancy talk. He was right, though. After I touched that idol in the grove, it was like a big tree started to grow in my head. And all these weird... Done. And all these weird thoughts starts and feelings and power sprouted on its branches like big black leaves. I had to figure myself out, so I followed the weave, like the bone man said. I don't know how I knew what to do, but I just did. After you squished the brain, Beard Man showed up. Said the weave led him to me. Oh, is it the, the Gandalf guy? I forgot his name. I think that's what she's talking about. The guy who's kind of like Gandalf in the D&D universe, right? <clears throat> oh, let's see here. So... He's teaching me how to make sense of all these leaves in my head tree. He says I need to use magic responsibly. He also says not to call him Beard Man. I'll let you know how it goes. There you go. I forgot his name. Okay. Floric. Dear friend, I doubted you for so long. Perhaps you knew that already in spite of my best attempts. You proved yourself time and again. At Joaquin's Rest, in the Moonrise Towers, in Worm's Rock. And still I doubt it. Another brain's defeat should have proven your courage. Yet I was more doubtful than ever. This was a ruse, a dream, a trick, and then one eve from the elf song I heard it singing. A raucous, lewd, tuneless, drunken refrain. I'd never heard anything more terrible and more beautiful. I raised my voice and I joined the chorus. That was the moment all my doubts melted away and we were replaced with something more valuable. Oh, Baldur's Gate will be whole again and I might have doubted you, but you never did. With profound admiration, Laura. How nice. Elminster. Do you recall the first day we met, my boy? You could have been no more than eight summers old, clutching your mother's apron, eyebrows singed off by the fireball you'd unleashed into your neighbor's rose bush. You were crying because the flowers were so beautiful and you did not mean to destroy them. How kind, how eager, how brilliant you were, and yet so naive. You could not see that the power so carelessly begets destruction, but so too might your good nature be the guiding light by which your abilities might shape our world for the better. Where is that child now, I wonder? Did he remain at Blackstaff? No, he's buried in his books. Does he live with his mother's aging heart, weeping for the roses? Or is he within you still, lost among the trappings of godhood you so casually adorned yourself with? Wherever he is, I hope he can forgive me. To him, I promise, I will not make the same mistakes again. Elminster. That almost sounds like he's writing to Gale, because he says something about godhood. I'm not a god, right? I didn't become a god. So I don't even know what happened. I don't even know. <laughs> that letter sounds like it's misplaced, right? These people in the background will shut up so I can read you guys these letters. I received a $2 tip from Game Master. He says, I'm disappointed the new South Park game. They had two good games that got stupid. It's not even worth 30. It's more like five or 10 bucks, man. Uh, P.S. Your old playthroughs were hilarious. Well, thank you. And I, I knew as much. I knew that was going to happen from everything I saw about that Snow Day game. It looks atrociously bad. And I'm not surprised to hear that it is atrociously bad. I'm sorry that you wasted money on it, though. Okay. Continuing on with our epilogue here. Uh, Alfira. That's our the musician, correct? That we that we helped uh, with the, the songs over the course of the game? I'm sorry it's been so long, but I have the most amazing news. You know how LaCrissa was working insane hours at the L Song Tavern? She woke me up one morning all excited and told me she had a surprise for me. She took me to a house in the lower city that had a plaque hanging up outside of it plaque with your and Lahala's names on it and School of Music beneath. I burst into tears. I couldn't believe it. It's the cutest house you've ever seen with a big open space downstairs and a small loft where we can sleep. Word spread and before I knew it, I had a room packed with trainee bards from Cantle Keep to Waterdeep. But Chris had to quit to El Song to help out. I'm teaching night and day and I fall into bed utterly exhausted every night and I've never been happier. You come visit me sometime. I'd love to have you. Lots of love, Alfira. These are awesome epilogue stories. These are really, really good, man. I'm happy to read these. Let's keep going. Hey there. Would you mind passing this on to Carlac? Thanks a mil. Oh, I wasn't supposed to read this. Carlac, if you're reading this, you're alive. One way or another, you found a way. Thank the gods. I think that you're so often wondering what's become of you. Good write to me, won't you please? Yours faithfully, Damon. <laughs> so he didn't write to me. He wrote to her. 
Poor guy's got a crush, I guess. All right, keep going. We've got Nocturne. Dear Shadowheart. This is to Shadowheart now. Hope that you're happy and well. I must keep this short as I remain surrounded by Char's followers at almost every waking moment in my new enclave. I dearly wish for you to enjoy your night spent with old friends, and I hope that you and I will share such a reunion. I know it must seem strange for me to dwell on such heretical thoughts, yet I cannot help myself. Perhaps one day I shall find some measure of the bravery that you did and walk away from this light. Till then, I shall keep safe and hold memories of you as my other one ember of light amid an ocean of darkness. Till we find each other once again, yours always, Nocturne. Uh, Dark Gaming says this epilogue didn't exist at release. It was added later. People wanted a proper ending. Boss. If Yankee script, Tursu adorns one side of the page. The other is written in the common tongue, Shillac. I wanted to read it. I didn't want to collect it in my inventory. Well, once again, the game's awful engine rears its ugly head. Letter from Ho. I had a dream last night. Not that there were any nights here or any days. It was a dream about you, all of you, and you were here with me. And I served bread and jam and oat crackers and cheeses and enough tea to quench a desert. You nibbled and sipped and smiled and laughed and you asked if I was happy. Nobody has asked that for so long and I just don't know if anyone has ever asked at all. I didn't have the words to answer, so I instead led you through my house and showed you all the souls that are here Beautiful with me. Night. They were Raphael's once, but now they only belong to themselves. The archive is an art gallery, the boudoir of Grant's Kitchen, and the dungeon is now a refuge for any wounded soul or creature that finds its way to us. Am I happy? I don't know, but I am hope and I persist because of you. That's pretty nice. Marina. I thought I'd reach out for once. Oh, I'd reach out first for once. So Marina was the one involved with the hag plot line. I finally had my baby, a beautiful boy. I can't believe I ever thought of giving him up. He screams his head off half the night, and I've barely slept, but I'm the happiest I've ever been. Other than my wedding day, of course. I decided to name him Connor after his dad. With Ethel gone, myself and some other hag survivors have started our own publishing house. We've only printed a few pamphlets so far, but I'm halfway through my first book. Me, an author. It's like something out of a dream. Mind you, it's all about how to kill hags, but you know what they say, you write what you know. With every pamphlet we publish, more people show up to our support groups. As happy as that makes me, it breaks my heart to see how much warm harm Ethel did. But so long as I live, another hag won't set foot in Baldur's Gate. You have my word. Anyway, the reason I'm writing isn't just to talk your ear off. Uh, it's to say thank you for saving a scared young mother, a uh, scared young girl who thought she'd be a terrible mother. I couldn't have been more wrong. Next time we meet, pints are on me, Marina. So we did the right thing because there were many choices there. Originally, she was a pretty bad person in Act 1, trying to give up her baby to save her husband, you know. But, uh, it looks like it turned out well. I hope my penmanship has improved somewhat in the past months. This is Devlor. This is the other tiefling who we saved, and he helped us in the finale. When I first stumbled into the city, I shook so badly, I could scarcely hold the soup the priestess pressed into my hands, let alone write and thank you as you deserve. It is only when the city itself began to shake that I felt my hands grow still. Along with the other veterans sheltering at the temple, the scars of Ereltruel's unworthy legions, I watched that monstrosity rise over the city. We felt no fear, only anger, disgust, purpose, and with it, power. I do not know what oath we cling to now or how long it'll last, but we shall use it to ensure that this city will not suffer as Ituriel did, whether it wants us or not. It is more than a th thanks I alone I owe. No words can make amends for what I did to my people, but that is as it should be. More come to the temple every day to aid in our relief efforts. And if I am permitted to work alongside them, then I am content. Come and see us when you can. Zevlor. Very interesting. All right. Pan a harp stamped letter. Who would have stamped a letter with a harp? Zolo's dead, so it ain't him. My friend, I hope this comes to find you wherever you are. I wanted to thank you, and as a favor, I'm to be made a watcher. The High Harper put me forward to the Harper Council for service to the city. I'm not sure what that means, but I know that if it wasn't for you, I'd be back mucking about my mother's yard. I'm permitted to bring one guest to the ceremony who will name me Watcher before the Council. You spoke for me once before. I understand you're probably busy. I would be honored if you do it again. I wait your reply whenever you can, but hopefully soon, Harper Geraldus. Who in the holy hell is Harper, Ger Harper Geraldus? I don't remember this guy at all. <laughs> I remember every other person whose letter we just read, I have no recollection of who this is. Wow. Um, Jade, he says, I'm, I saw Like a Dragon ended, and uh, Like a Dragon ended, and he loved the ending with Ichiban and Saiko, thought it was funny. Me too. Drew Corbin said, did you see the awesome support for this game would be down for a second run down the road? Uh, we're not doing this game again. 
Dark Gaming says, this is the dude you defended. Who did I defend? You met him for a second? I don't know. I have no clue who this is. Now, what about the thing I put in my inventory by accident? Here we go. Orvius may not be with us, but the comet shines ever bright. Bre breath by breath, battle by battle, Vlokith's death draws nearer. I have taken to the astral plane, slaughter all who must be slaughtered, and spread the air's truth to every possible ear, willing and unwilling. Many Githyanki have already taken up arms as warriors of the comet. Others have remained in their enclaves or traveled to creches, dedicating themselves to our cause as scribes, spies, and slate scholars. But our allies do not all call themselves children of Git. Jareth Men Agit, Menyar Agit, the Gizurai's, Githzurai's god king, has requested an audience. There was a time I would have thought such a coalition was unspeakable. But with the Githzurai at our side, not even the full force of the Kith Rocky could stop us. If Vlokith is to fall, perhaps the two skies must again be made one. Boss, Revrical Torpheus, Knight of the Common. So, that sounds awesome, though. Like, it sounds like this is the, one of the better outcomes. I mean, obviously, if Orpheus didn't die, he'd be fighting the fight. But the fact that he became a martyr to save the world has actually rallied the Gith together, even the ones who were separated from them ages ago. And now they're all teaming up. So this sounds like an awesome... This sounds like it could be its own story in itself somewhere down the line, right? Cool. Uh, I received a dollar tip... From he hate me DSP super fan, butterflies in the sky. I can fly twice as high. Just take a look. It's in a book. It's reading Philip. Thanks a lot for the dollar tip, there, Kirk. <laughs> Thanks for adding so much to the stream with the reading rainbow theme song. Uh, and I received a twenty dollar no, excuse me, a ten dollar tip. I read it wrong. Very entertaining Baldur's Gate playthrough. I loved it. From Hickory Handballs. Thank you, Hickory Handballs. Thank you all tonight for these uh, contributions and support for the finale of the game. We're not nearly done. It's funny because we're almost an hour into the stream. And we're not even close to being done, right? So everyone's like, oh, the, the epilogue's like 30 minutes. Like, no, it's only 30 minutes if you rush through it and you don't read and you don't have to talk to people when you're streaming. There you go. All right. Oh, by the way. Gold vest has won the final polling test and now it stands above the rest as the vest for the conclusion let me go get it i need to get gold vest hold on <laughs> all right the gold vest Ah, cool, fresh air. By the living gods, I needed it. Yeah. Phew. Perhaps the bard knows oh, the man. Way. Very good. Unless my taste in music Second place was beige. Course, you guys wanted the original vest for tonight, but no. Old vest. All right. All right, done there. All right, we got to talk to everybody still. Let's see who's, who's gabbing behind me the whole goddamn time. Who is that up there? Who the fuck is that? Who the fuck is this? Mi Milil? Oh, hello. Let me guess. You've got some suggestions about the music choice. Music's fine. Uninvited guests are not. Who the hell are you? Also, you seem glum. I thought bards were meant to be full of pep and joy. I find it hard to summon up the trademark pep these days. You have no idea who I am, do you? No. I thought Withers might have set the stage a little. Oh, what a shame. I just want a different song. Listen to that. Uh, go on then. What's your name? Can we deceive him? Let's do a deception roll. Let's do a deception roll. Tell him we know who he is. We did it. <laughs> We're doing a deception roll. The game's over. Here you go. You. You know. <laughs> You're bloody right. It is an honor. Finally. 
the scry picks an adventurer of substance, of culture. What can I do you for? Uh, nothing. Just carry on as you were. Fantastical news. Carry on, I shall. Did I seriously? I cheered him up. I don't know who he was supposed to be, but he's happy now. Yeah, look. Now we're friends. <laughs> for ten more turns, we're friends. And after that, he hates me again. I have no idea who the hell that was either. He's the Lord of Songs from D&D. That's really stupid. Anyway, all right, who's uh, who's over here? Here, how about Mince? Let's see what he's up to. Him and his hamster. Ah, breathe deep pool. There he is. There's the hamster. <laughs> sings from every stone in this okay, place. that's super cute that he sits uh, on his shoulder. To meet again, where your journey began, my friend. An honor for Minsk and his hamster both. Oh, and for Happy also. Who's Happy? Who's this uh, guy? Yes, um, honored, of course. Happy Horson? Who are you? We just didn't say we could bring guests. It's good to see you, Minsk, Too Boo, and Happy. <laughs> see how your very presence snatches the breath from his chest? And it is no wonder. It is just this day that Happy learned of your legend. Well, we gazed down upon the very city you saved. Huh. He dangled me from the high hall upside down. What? For two hours. <laughs> uh, the guild should not go creeping in high places if they do not have the stomach for them. Hmm? It is well for Happy the strange portal appeared when it did. Minsk's arm was growing excellent. You're still chasing after the guild? I thought that you made your peace with them. Yeah, let's say that. So I have. Oh, it is a peace made more from blade and boot than it is any sense of brotherhood. Nine fingers forbade any looting of the Illithid's fleshy vessels. And so Minsk guards what remains of the battle site, even from her. But where Minsk might once have thrown any sneaking scoundrels from the tower top, now I tell them of you. How you ruled the wickedness within. How they might do the same. Huh. Yes, yes, I'll rule it. I'll be better. Oh, of course. It is still for Boo to decide if they live or die. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. But enough, my friend. I cannot tell your tale if I do not know the whole of it. Minsk and Boo would know where you have been, what you have done. Cool. Carlton says Happy was in his ending for Minsk. He had all three Netherstones by the time he got in my party. So he ended up getting a bad ending. Oh, really? So the timing is something too, huh? That's interesting. All right, I'm just living my life. And I found someone to live it with. See, I told you. See, people were like, oh, no. Uh, you know, you were just you were just mistaken about being with Paulson. But no. Look, he's literally saying he's with someone. Which means the game did force romance with Paulson, even though... I didn't select it. The game did it anyway. It totally did. He literally is saying it right here. Everyone was giving me shit. They're like, oh, you misunderstood it. No, I didn't. It literally says it right here in this sentence. You see that? <laughs> they forced romance even though I didn't want it. Here, I'll be finding more adventure where I can without tadpoles this time, thankfully. Without tadpoles, boo... Uh, forgive my hamster's scorelessness. He has developed something of a taste for tadpole. <laughs> and is displeased with the diet I have been forced to place him on. Now, halfling, we will not have you embarrassing him in front of his friends. So you are to know the rest of the company you keep. Will Ravenguard, the Blade of Frontiers, Devil Horned and Angel Hearted. Lazel of Crash Killer, true child of Gith, and true friend to Boo. Though she will and say it is not so. Oh my god, he's describing everybody. Gael, who now names himself a god. Though in truth, Minsk has known few wizards who did not think of themselves so. <laughs> Shadowheart, two gods tugged at her soul, but she managed to keep it all for herself in the end. Wait, Boo, did, did she do something with her hair? <laughs> Halsin, Archdruid of Archers somewhere. 
He is a much better man than he smells. Oh, man. And there, the champion of the hells herself. Carlock Demon's Bane. Devil's Bane. Merkel Ball and Bane. Really? She's been tearing it up, huh? We don't know that yet. We once didn't talk to her. Once the is made of good names once more, Bull shall scratch the hells wide open and find a way to bring her back. And finally, Jahira. If this is a name you do not already know, then not even Bull can save you. Study them well, sneak thief. For the best among them will be a guide for your guild. Heroes who put the city before themselves. Who never falter in their duty. And more than this, who never arrive to a party without even a gift for the host. But wait! Go, my friend. Be among our friends. There is much work yet to be done before this one is fit to join them. Wow, what a speech. Uh, let's see here. Carlton Jr. says, In my game, Minsk inexplicably is on death row incarcerated in a dungeon. He was about to be killed right when Withers summoned him to the camp. Was it because maybe he never, um... Did you never do his whole plot line? So he didn't know that that was a fake Jahara. It was a doppelganger. So he followed her and did a bunch of crimes and stuff for the absolute. So maybe he ended up just thinking that Jahara was killed and he went nuts. Because that's what was happening until finally we convinced him otherwise. Right? The whole gang is here. Jade says, see, son? What do you mean, Jade? See, see, son? What do we mean by that? Uh, Jack of Fan says, if you thought Carlac got a good ending before, which you talk to her now. Or right, we're going to talk to her. What is, is that a discount Kratos? Yes. What's up, Maximum Turbo? Good evening. Uh, shall we say something to this guy? Happy Horson? He's going to kill me, isn't he? Not the big mad bastard. The hamster. Alright. Alright, Shadowheart's chowing down. Alright, let's see what Will's up to. There you are, my friend. Breathe deep. Can you smell it? So he couldn't be reverted back to his original form, even though his contract with what's her name is over. That's bullshit. Breathe deeply and taking the sense around you. Nice, I have a good sense of smell. You take in every scent the night breeze carries. Sweet honeysuckle, tender violets. And an earthy fragrance you can't quite recognize. I smell fragrant flowers and a mysterious accent that I can't, can't, can't quite place. Forest trees draped in moss. Bittersweet, smoky, and that faintest hint of vanilla. A far cry from the rancid Avernus heat that's been clogging my lungs. Huh. I swear, Karlak and I have felled enough Cambians to build a fortress with their horns. Who'd have thought that just one of those fiends held the key to escaping Avernus for good? One of them sported a map and some blueprints. If you want all the gory details, Karlak can fill you in. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to see you Sunday. Oh, you're not going to be here tomorrow? Okay. Tomorrow we're doing different games. We're doing Dragon's Dogma 2 and Alone in the Dark. I don't know what order yet. So, new stuff tomorrow, but if you can't make it, I'll see you Sunday. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay, I miss traveling with you. You were a pleasure to be around. How have you been with your warlock power? Without your warlock powers, right? I think the splinters I made out of the last bone devil I saw speak for themselves. Not to pat myself too hard on the back, but I'm not such a bad ranger if I do say so myself. Uh, have you had any time to visit your father? I've seen him more than a few times. And he's as proud of me as I am of him. He's leading the city's renewal, opened the gates to all newcomers, rebuilt the council from scratch. And he's back in his element, commanding the flaming fist with brave heart and no shortage of empathy. The likes of Gortash can bend people's minds with a few chosen words. No tadpole needed. <laughs> Bane's chosen primed the fist for a war they weren't meant to win. He convinced them there was an assassin hiding in every shadow, that cruelty was the correct answer to crisis, with a few exceptions. Fathers pardoned every last fist. If my forgiveness not be tears will, so be it. I shall forgive them all the same. 
His words, not mine. Cool. He still believes in the bow and the blade, but with Floric's help, he's teaching the fist a new lesson. Valor is found not in the wounds you inflict, but in the lives that you have bettered. May they all what take the hell it was to that? heart. So I don't know what happened. I don't. I don't understand. I thought that once he was finally not under the control of Mizora, he would lose the demon aspect. But apparently, he's demon forever, which makes no sense because he doesn't have demon powers. Yet he still looks like a demon. That's pretty stupid, in my opinion. Um. Also, I was just thinking about something. So we were. He was talking about uh, Gortash, and I was like, "Wait a minute! I just thought of something." Every one of the chosen, the three chosen, right of the evil gods, that is. Each got helped by the gods, except for Gortash. Like, what was in Thorn? He basically turned into a giant undead monster, correct? Because that was the the what the god did to help him. Uh, Orin got to turn into a giant slayer, and then the gate, which was supposed to be Ball, you know, acting through the gate, kept buffing her. Gortash didn't get shit. Gortash had to fill the room with a bunch of like traps and shit. Like he said, he was the bane of what? The, 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 uh, the Chosen of Bane? Who the fuck's Bane? Bane's a, a shitty god. He didn't do shit to help Gortash at all. You know? It was just a bunch of traps and shit in the room. That's about all. <laughs> wow. There was, like, no godly powers at all. Gortash did get a transformation? Yeah, but he only got the transformation halfway through the fight. And he was already, like, on his way to death. So it didn't even help him. Like, it didn't, it didn't change the fight at all. He just got spanked. Once we basically got the, the shield off of him and the shield was technology, not from the god, he was, you know, it was a spanking session. So, I don't understand. Like, that god sucks. I wouldn't want to work for the god, Bane, the god of tyranny. He sucks ass. What a shitty god. <laughs> right? Like, why, why, can't I, why can't I turn into a giant undead creature, a, a big slaying monster with buffs from a gate? I gotta stand here and fucking, like, trap shoot out little missiles and shit? What is this dumb thing? It's like everyone else is turning into, de you know, demonic deities, and this guy's like a Batman villain shooting, like, little nets and shit at you. You know, like, what the hell? What a joke. Anyway, I received a dollar tip from He Hate Me Super Fan. He Hate Me DSP Super Fan. What's wrong with electing to select romance options in video games? You know the likelihood of us in chat aren't going to find their very own soulmates in the real world like you have with Cat. We are members of the basket of deplorables and our best. Our baby batter will grow up to the storm to capital someday. Anyways, the thing we would like very much living vicariously through you and living vicariously through video game romances. Do us a favor and romance away. How about you buy the game and you romance and you leave me alone? Thanks a lot for the dollar tip. B Mr. Baby Batter or whatever the hell your name is over there. Uh... <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yes, he was the Archduke of a city-state while Orin lived in the sewers, but again, he sucked. He was a joke. Right? Basically, he got gifted all the po political power and the money, but then when it came down to brass tacks, as they say, he got his ass handed to him in a paper bag because he was stupid. He had fucking gadgets and shit. He's like some fucking reject, you know, comic book supervillain shooting, like, fucking nerf darts at you, right? He's like, oh, my ability is to have a shield, so you you comically hurt yourself with your projectiles. What? Where is the god to help? Oh, he had a transformation. He was almost dead when he transformed. It didn't matter that he transformed. <laughs> this is the worst god. Bane is a capricious god. He tortured Gortash for his failure and literally tries to recruit you as his champion for slaughtering Gortash. He only supports winners. When does he try to recruit me? He That didn't happen. <clears throat> that never happened. Anyway, I miss traveling with you. You're a pleasure to be around. I've missed you too. The rush of battles we fought. The hearts of hearts. The nights around the fire. The comfort of knowing I didn't face the unknown alone. If I had to do it all over again, and I'd rather not, to be clear, I can't imagine not having you at my side. Okay. Well, that's enough hell talk for the moment. So his ending the sucks too. Young. Seriously. You go wasting it. Oh, Jader, we'll be here tomorrow. You had your days confused. All right, cool. For that matter. I plan on downing half a bottle myself. Oh, did I say half a bottle? I meant half a dozen. So you plan on dying tonight. That's excellent. Hopefully someone has the stomach pump ready, you fucking idiot. Anyway, uh, let's keep going. Who's left? Who's that down there? Oh, I see. It's a lovely, uh, my, 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 uh, party member, the port. 
Oh no, it's a ba a Baylor Ale, actually. Hey, you know what? Fuck them. I'm just gonna sail off. I'm getting this boat to sail away. <laughs> Who's left? We didn't talk to Carlac, right? Definitely Carlac is left. And Halson, I think. I think it's Carlac and Halson are the two left. Carlac is dancing. Look at that, she's dancing. Oh, we didn't talk to uh, Jahira. Talk to Jahira. Well, <clears throat> now. You can make yourself presentable when you have a mind to. That makes one of us? Whoa, that's fucked up. I've learned a lot since we last met. I'm glad the months have not been wasted. Particularly as I spent them cleaning up the mess we made of the city. Same twisting alleys for purse pickers. Same wooden buildings ready to get burnt by next year's dragon. Same cisterns overflowing. Huh. Baldurian, it's a kit, but it's our kit. I wouldn't change a thing. Baldurian, <clears throat> simply get on with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Stubbornness, civic spirit, plain stupidity. Perhaps all three, but nothing I will sniff at any longer. Harpers have come from half the world over to lend aid. <clears throat> Farmers, masons, healers. My own son, Jord, has been wooed to their ranks. Already he plans crop cycles in Worms Crossing. Not so for my daughter. Ryan's rejoined the Flaming Fist. Temporarily, you understand. To organize the craftsmen. Though she spends more time locking up comrades for pocketing eight ones. <sighs> they might learn a thing or two if they don't expel her. Again. Oh, well, and good, but what about you? I want to hear what you've been up to. Ah, oh, there is still much to do. People to house. A Harper network to rebuild. I may have little love for this city, but so long as my family chooses to serve it, I can do no less. For all your travels, I hope you have arrived where you want to be. Home. Whatever that means to you. This exploded in the background. And I'm glad that you like the new Godzilla and vs. Kong movie. Uh, Jahira is a legacy character in Baldur's Gate. I'm aware she was in 1 and 2, but didn't ever find very... You didn't ever find her very interesting. Didn't use her or care much for her plot, says Carlton. Okay. <clears throat> so where we're sitting now, this campsite is my home even when I'm far away. Paulson is home to me. I told you guys. You keep saying that there's no romance. There is. Literally, here's another fucking dialogue option. Paulson is home to me. The game forced a homosexual relationship on my character, even though I didn't choose it. It forced it on me anyway. So that's pretty fucked up. Imagine if I was a serious role player and I was being, I was trying to be serious. You know what I'm saying? And then the game did this to me. I'd be upset. Personally, I don't give a shit. I think that the game is flawed in a lot of ways and the romancing is one of them. That's a huge fucking flaw. I never chose this whatsoever and the game just did it anyway without my uh, my permission. So the game essentially is like a, a sexual predator that just does what it wants with your character without permission. That's nice. Should someone could contact Larian and tell them that that's actually fucked up and that some people might have serious problems with that. That if, what if they wanted to have a character a certain build or a certain way and they ruined their role play with the fucking game? That's pretty fucked up, actually. Personally, I, I'm lucky I don't care. You know, but some people might. <clears throat> anyway, I'll say this campsite is my home. Sure. Ah, uh, sentiment. The... With the greatest affection, I can think of better ways to sour our stomachs. I must inspect the refreshments. You'll never know. Some ne'er do well might have tampered with the wine. Okay. The Carlac's right there. I think that's it, right? Just Carlac and Halson? Yeah, this is pretty fucked up. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. That's really messed up that the game would force you into something like that. What a great game, huh? 140 hours and they fuck you over. Boy, uh... Carlac's just really into physical fitness these days. She was dancing before, now she's doing this. Alright, let's see how she's doing. Oh, shit. My gods! He wasn't kidding. With this, you mad bastard! You brought me back! <laughs> Soldier. It, it's really you. 
I've missed you, man. Like, I've really missed you. And you're so clean. How have things been in Avernus? I've missed you, too. So you missed you, too. Be nice. <laughs> I'd say so. Can't think of who's been carrying your pack now that Kay's out of commission. Man, we had some good times. Wish Will and I had more time to reminisce, but surviving Avernus is just non-stop. <laughs> Still, having him there has been incredible. <laughs> you really can get through anything with someone you love at your side. Oh, but hey, guess what we found? Cambion dropped a map with directions and blueprints for Zariel's own private forge. A fucking forge! Our current plan is to get in, grab a smith, and force him to fix old Rusty. Or maybe give me a brand new model that can live outside of Ernest. Good. You haven't seen the last of old Karlak yet, soldier. I already hear you might be able to fix your heart. You must be so happy. Trying not to count my owlbears before they've hatched. But the thought of coming back to Baldur's Gate keeps me going. Can I look you up when I'm out? You better or I'll hunt you down myself. Uh Hey, that would be kind of fun though. High stakes hide and seek. <laughs> Honestly, I'd be curious to see if you could land a blow or two. Gods, is it good to see you again. To be here together. Hard not to get used to it all over again. This won't be the last time. I promise. Pretty nice. Hopefully she does get the, the, the transplant and uh, there's no more threat of death. So that's it. I think now we talk to everyone, right? I'm pretty sure we talked to every character. Let's just do one final perusal around here. I don't know why there's selenite slippers here. I don't know whose they are. Yeah, it says those you're stealing if you take them. No one else hiding around. No secret characters or anything to pop out. No mimic chests. Right? I guess that's it. it smells so good here. <laughs> I guess we gotta talk to Halson, who I never initiated a romance with. You would think someone of my vintage would be inured to the passage of time. Yet these past six months have seemed endless without your company. But now our paths cross once more. Let me guess, just as nature intended, the feelings mutual, I missed you. Honestly, time's flown by. You sound sentimental considering we didn't really get along. This game is fucked up. There were three dialogue options with the other people saying you were romantic with Halson. Here you can say you didn't get along. This is, the game is fucked up. I keep telling you, the, this is ending is stupid and the thing's fucked up. It doesn't make, it makes no sense whatsoever, right? I'll just do the pun just as nature intended. Just as I hoped they would, more like. The Oak Father has been kind to me this past while. Yet I cannot forget the bond we all forged together. It is one that can weather any distance, any passage of time. I know it can. For I feel the longing for old friends in my heart each day. Right. Exactly. It says you haven't seen him for six months, but apparently you guys live together, as you just said in other dialogue. But again, you see, this is the point that I've been having across this whole game. This game has what I call too many moving parts. When you have so much going on, it's a convoluted story with tons of different subplots and dialogue choices. The combat has a million things going on all at once. The game is almost living and breathing, but because of that, things break down. And this is one of them definitely right here that's just not working. It has no clue if you're actually in a relationship with this guy or not. It has no idea what it's doing right now. It's really, really stupid. Uh, and again, uh, if I were role-playing and I really cared about this game more than than just, oh, it's a game I played. Like if this were, I was really into D&D, I was into Baldur's Gate. If I was sad that this was gonna be the last Baldur's Gate made by Larian, I'd be pissed right now. I'd be like, why did they fuck the ending up, right? Sounds like you need a hug, sounds like you need a drink. Let's say, I sounds like you need a drink. Well, I am not normally given to imbibing, but this is a special occasion, and I believe our dear Withers procured a fine honey mead as part of the celebratory victuals. Celebratory? It's celebratory, not celebratory. By such an elixir, but that can wait. 
Your company is what truly drew me. Now, we have much to catch up on. Do not allow me to ramble on. I am eager to hear all you've been doing. Uh, Hidalgo says, canonically, Halson always goes back to the Act 2 lands. He takes care of orphans and stuff. He's like a park ranger. Maybe it was implying you were hanging out because you're maidenless. Uh, no, definitely not. If you didn't re read the dialogue earlier, it was pretty blatantly romantic stuff, right? Oh, my God. So, you first, Halson. I want to hear about the life you've made the people you've helped. In that case, very well. Our community grows rapidly. In six months, we have turned what was once a shadowy wasteland into a true home for all. In another six months, I would wager the scars of the past will be entirely invisible, even to those who remember That's them. good. They're fixing the lands of Act 2. The old masonry of Moonrise Towers and Rythwin have been repurposed into new homes. And the land is rich with harvests and... Bountiful trees. Wow, what a what a twist. Nature what a and change. civilization are in harmony. Stronger together. Very nice. Sounds wonderful. Is this the balance that you wished for? In a manner of speaking, yes. Though it is a more complex, evolving beast than I could ever have anticipated. True balance is no simple fixed thing. Hmm. I see that now. We welcome folk from all walks of life. Anyone who wishes for a new start. Naturally, it can be chaotic at times, but it is a thrilling sort of chaos. It thrives in ways I could never have dreamed of. Oh, I'd like to see it for myself. I would, actually. You are welcome whenever you like, and for however long you please. I'm sure you can't. They're never going to show you that. Now, please, tell me all, and spare <clears throat> no details. I shall not lie. I have an ulterior motive in wishing to hear all. It is the children, you see. My charges. Their appetite for bedtime tales is greater than I could ever have anticipated. Another story, Daddy Halson. Another <laughs> is the chorus that greets me each nightfall. They have all but exhausted my repertoire in but a few short months. No mean feat given the lifetime I have lived. I desperately need new material, please. My reputation is at stake. Oh, my God. I'd have known bedtime tales was a possibility. I've sought you out at camp. I expect you have a few tales that need to wait until they are older. All right, let me see what I have. I am all ears. <laughs> though I never cared <laughs> for that phrase. A rather unsettling image. All ears? Oh. Here's a little flat. I'll spice it up a little. Here we go. Let's spice up those stories. There we go. We got a 19 roll. <laughs> I like that we're still doing dice rolls in the epilogue. Like it matters, right? You are truly incapable of disappointing. The children shall be wrapped. And have no fear. All due credit shall be given to the tale's originator. Now, it would be cruel of me to hoard you all to myself for the evening, as much as I would like to. I shall leave you to the others for now, unless there was anything else. What about Thaniel and Oliver? Yeah, whatever happened to them? <laughs> Quite often. They come and go as they please, but with so many playmates to avail of, <laughs> they are far from strangers. They ask after you often. What you did for them will never be forgotten. I can see it in the land all around me. But more importantly, I see it in their faces hmm. whenever they visit. To make a child smile is to dabble with the power of gods as far as I'm concerned. What a sap this guy is, right? <laughs> uh, you seem more subtle than I expected. I thought that was against your nature. As did I, but... <laughs> Somehow I feel like I no longer need to roam. That I have found something worthy laying roots for. Amazing what can be discovered about oneself, even at a ripe old age. What of the grove do you stay in touch? On occasion, but <clears throat> I prefer not to interfere. Francesca of the High Forest is Archdruid now, and by all accounts, she has proven to be a steady and wise influence. Even Korga may yet find true balance, thanks to her influence. 
Uh, may I have a hug? I wouldn't say no to a kiss. This is hilarious because they're not romantic, but they still give you these options. I'm just gonna say I'm out of here. Fuck this. Uh, before you go, <laughs> I have something for you. Just a little keepsake. Oh, I, I don't want it. You Do keep you remember it. how I told you I like to whittle? I made this. You can shove that up your ass. Good place for it. Actually, it's probably where he had it. <laughs> Ducks are my favorite. He whittled a duck? I thought they were particularly fitting in he this He whittled case. you a duck. They are migratory birds, of course. Traveling far and wide with the turn of the seasons. Oh, my God. He whittled you yes. a duck. They always find their way back to where they belong. <laughs> Just like old friends find themselves back in each other's company. <laughs> like, oh, oh, look, look, it's lovely. Here, watch it float. <laughs> he whittled you a duck. <clears throat> this may fetch a modest price from a merchant with poor taste. I'm going to say, you're a sentimental creature at heart, you know that? <laughs> oh, I am well aware, trust me. Now I've taken oh up my enough of your God. Time. Go on. Enjoy the festivities. This guy is something else, man. I got a whittled duck. A duck whittled out of wood. It smells of the deep forest. Hey Scratch. I got something for you, boy. <laughs> hey Scratchy. Hold on, boy. I got something for you. You ready? You gotta, look at this. Look at this new thing I got. Here you go. Ready, boy? And go fetch. Go ahead, boy. All right. Good boy. Scratch yaps a request you know well. Fetch. What a good doggo. That's right. He knew what I wanted. <laughs> <clears throat> Good boy. Too bad we can't talk to him because there's no more potions of talking to animals. By the way, the duck's gone. Look, it's literally gone. It disappeared. Right? Yeah, it's it's gone from the universe. Scratch, he played catch with it. It's just disappeared. Wow. Well, it's not like we're going to miss it. All right, let's see here. Uh, I received a $3.33 tip from Cheese. Fun fact, the heavily hinted Withers is a jurgle. The original god of death in the world of Farron and D&D lore. He gave up his bo godly duties to Baal, Bane, and Merkel, but he's pissed they can't behave and keep trying to take over the world, so he works to undermine them by assisting you even in his retirement. Well, that's kind of neat. If that is the case, that's pretty neat for the people who are fans of D&D, because it is weird that you basically revive him at the beginning of the game, and he never explains who the hell he is, but he knows so much, right? So thank you very much for that tip. I also just... Received a $3 tip from an anonymous tipper says, I'm a gay man. I'm happy it turned out this way. True love is a real de destination or final destination. No matter where it takes you, I'm happy for you. Well, as you saw, I turned that one on its head and I threw the duck right into the dog's butt. So I don't think we have to worry too much about that one anymore. <clears throat> okay. Very good. Okay. Well, I think we're actually done now. So now I guess we talk to uh, Withers and we get our credits roll. And hopefully a nice hefty trophy reward. It'd be nice if we get a big trophy here for beating the game. And since I beat the game in such a rousing manner, hopefully they'll reward me with several platinums. I would I would I would accept no less than maybe three platinum trophies for the completion of this game. I mean it was longer than three other fucking games I've played. So might as well give me three platinum trophies, ready? Alright, Withers, I think it's time to say goodbye to this fucking mess of a world. Get me out of here. Yes. Uh, I'm caught up. What comes next? What indeed? Prick up thy ears and listen. Mm-hmm. The balance of the world restored. The balance of these lives, mortal and otherwise, brought to account. Hear me, thou heroes, wastrels, friend. No Asterian. I have waited long to tell you these words. Asterian was a dick. Fuck him. It is over. <laughs> For now. Thou played thy part in weaving the fabric of fate itself. But for every thread you sewed, 
So did the gods unravel another. Of course. Sleep, rest, revel, but be ready. For thou mayst yet be needed. Except Larian said they're not making any more content Until in this universe, again, so no. I never. wish thee every possible fortune, health, wealth, love, and above all, problems worth solving. <laughs> That's the tricky part. Finding the problems that are worth solving. To Baldur's Gate, to the greatest friends I would dream of, to brains without worms and a good night's sleep, to the, to the hope of more adventures to come. There you go. <clears throat> to you. Too bad there are none. <laughs> what a game. What a freaking game. Holy shit. Is all I have to say about that. Holy shit. Hero of the Forgotten Realms. Platinum trophy. Wait a minute. It's a silver? I only received a si Oh, all's well that ends well. Finish the game with a heartfelt thank you from Larian Studios. A gold trophy. Now we're on the right track. Now let's get that platinum. New milestone reach. Uh, my trophy level went up. By earning those. I increased my overall trophy level. Wow. I didn't even know that happens on PS5. I've never seen that before. I wonder if that's a new thing they patched into it or not. <clears throat> oh, no. No, what is that? Get me out of here. Uh, no sleep real vibes. There oh! Thou art the dead three. Oh shit! Thy faces, gods. Thy actions, barely worthy of the. Name. Oh, he's gonna chastise Didst the three truly evil gods. Didst believe thy ploy <laughs> would succeed? Didst believe I would not notice? Nice. Thou sought to bolster thy strength by taking away the souls of mortals. But souls vanish when their hosts become mine. Oh shit! Did you hear that? Did think the other gods would not notice? He just basically said your plot would have never gods worked anyway. You're you're idiots. Be, yet thou hast proven thyself. Fools. Wow! Everyone. It would have destroyed the whole world and gotten nothing the for it. The supplication of Bane, the whimper of Baal. The death mule of Merkel. What a bunch of dumbasses. Held by mortals. I overestimated thee. <clears throat> they did not. Wow. Vermin, away. Thou wilt trouble us no more. Wow. That's very interesting. So their whole plot was to basically get more souls for them so they have more power. But when you turn people into Mind Flayers, the souls are gone. So they would have gotten zero. They would have destroyed the entire world and gotten zero fucking souls for it. They're all complete idiots. That's pretty funny as shit, man. Withers, man, cool character. It's cool that basically he was kind of like the all-knowing... Uh, one of the all-knowing uh, entities in the universe, right? Its identity is revealed in a tomb under Baldur's Gate, not a place you explored. Oh, I explored like a million places. So, I don't know. I, I don't know where else it would have fucking been, but. All right. So only 43% of people who ever played the game beat it, yeah. Think about that, only 43%, because everyone's been telling me, oh no, the majority of people who played Baldur's Gate 3 beat it. Uh, not even half the people who played Baldur's Gate 3 beat it. And there's your evidence right there, geniuses. <laughs> At least on PS5. Of course, we don't know about the PC percent, but on PS5, that's pretty funny. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. It's official. Baldur's Gate 3 is done. It was an epic endeavor for me to play this game. It took a lot of convincing for you guys to get me to beat this game. And I did. So I want to say... From me to you, everyone who tuned in and listened and attended and engaged and supported, thank you so much. Whether you were here live on the streams or whether it was 
uh, you know, on demand on the channel over time. I mean, many people, this playthrough is so long, over 140 hours. Many of you probably are watching this later on, right? I doubt that many of you followed along live over the three and a half months that I played it. Many of you probably will be watching this over time. And as you watch this playthrough over time, I want you to appreciate the investment. I mean, I want, I want you to know I appreciate the investment. That's what I meant to say. That for you to watch that much of this with and me playing this, and again, this is a game I'm not good at. I didn't understand. I had to learn slowly and painstakingly with the help of a live audience, and if I didn't have that help, I never would have gotten through the game, right? I told you guys how many times during the, the course of the playthrough, this is a game that I would have essentially quit if I didn't have help, okay? So thank you so much for those who actually take the time to follow along 140 hours. I would argue probably the longest single playthrough ever because there are other games that I played more of, but usually it's, for example, an RPG with all of its DLCs, right? Or different seasonal content or a fighting game that I'm playing online endlessly or Call of Duty, right? But this is like the, the, the one narrative that's the longest I've ever experienced in gaming in my life so far. Um, and I'm going to tell you this. It was definitely an experiment. I didn't know what was going to happen when I did it. I'm going to be honest with everyone now because I talk about this on my podcast and stuff. But I'm going to say in the actual playthrough in the final part, yeah, this didn't really work for the channel. All right. Overall, the last few months have been very rough for DSP Gaming. Attendance is down. Uh, you know, engagement is down. I've lost a ton of views. I've lost a lot of support that the channel usually gets because sadly people do show up to the streams and a few support them. But overall, people want variety. That's what DSP Gaming is known for, variety. When I'm playing a 140 plus hour playthrough, okay, and it's taking up so much of my streaming time, it kills the variety. And a lot of people outright said, basically because you're playing this game so much, we're not gonna be around till you're doing other stuff. Well, now I'm done with it and th those people will probably come back. But it's just, it's sad because I, I understand why so many people like this game as Game of the Year 2023. I'm happy that I have played it to get that frame of reference. But at the same time, this is concrete evidence. This kind of game doesn't work for my channel. You know what I'm saying? It does. It, I can't be playing a game for three and a half, four months this much and expect it to work when people are saying, well, what's the variety? Where's the other games? Well, if I play other games, I'll never finish Baldur's Gate, right? <clears throat> so thank you. To those who did stick in there, who did engage in support, I know it was basically half my normal audience, all right? So things will get back to normal around here, but I'm happy that I did experience it. You guys convinced me to do it, and thanks to those who were around and were actually supporting this playthrough, because if it weren't for the support I got on the streams, this could have killed my business, how long this game was. I'm serious. And now, it, it just to, set, to, to be completely transparent with everyone out there, I might never play another game this long again. I think I've made a decision that I don't want to play games that are 100 hours long. It's just too much. You know, it's too much for this channel and everything. People want variety and I can't give it to you when I'm playing 140 hour games. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, there you have it. See, and Sarah, again, see, it's not just about that. She's like, but what about the streams I've always done? The streams are one half of my business. There's people here who become members, people who do super chats. That the, the, I'm telling you, the channel side stuff has suffered hugely because of this playthrough. It really has. And that's not a fault of the game. The game has great content. It's a good game. It doesn't fit my style. This was a huge experiment for me. A what if? What if I branch out and I play these insanely long games? I'll tell you right now, it didn't work. All right? It doesn't. I need to be branching out and doing variety. So Baldur's Gate 3 very well may be a historical playthrough for me where I will never do another game this long ever again. The evidence is now laid out that it doesn't work for this channel, okay? <clears throat> so I appreciate those of you who did stick in there. And hey, if anyone maybe just watching the final part and didn't care for the playthrough, you know, back to, back to normal now. But uh, I certainly hope that you guys enjoyed the ride. What a ride from me learning, li knowing literally almost nothing about this. No lore, nothing about D&D whatsoever. Basically taking what I knew out of the Divinity Original Sim gameplay I had done years ago and trying to apply that, having all this interaction with you guys, helping me all the way through. The dice rolls, the painstakingly slow combat, the errors that I made, tons of them along the way, the frustrating game bugs, just crazy stuff, right? And it will be memorable for sure. Certainly not my favorite game of all time, but by no means a bad game whatsoever. It was a ride, right? 
one that will definitely stand up there and I think people will remember my playing Baldur's Gate 3 for years to come and that's a good thing. So, from me to you, thank you to anyone who watched, attended, reported, engaged, or even enjoyed in any way this playthrough. I really, really appreciate it. And now the ride is done. Over, I would say probably after this, because this is about an hour and a half, two hours tonight. We're probably at like 143, 144 hours. So, what a hell of a ride. And again, this is like months of work. I hope that you people who watch it are like, whoa, that was awesome. Because, man, that was crazy. I don't, Again, I don't know if I'll ever go on another journey like this with you guys. You know? All right. A few quick shout outs. Pizza Box Gaming did a super chat. It's time for the second run. Dark Urge. No, I'm not doing a second run. Thank you, Nosey Real Vibes, for re-upping your membership. He's checking out Like a Dragon right now. I finished that earlier today. I just got uh, <clears throat> a super chat from Rare Tricks as well. Okay? So thank you guys for those super chats there. And, uh... I really, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. And... Let the adventure bejourn, okay? The D&D &D adventure ends here. Maybe one day there'll be another D&D &D game that I'll be interested in. It ain't gonna be by Larry, and they've already outright said we are not interested in making another one. Uh, let someone else do it. So we'll see. But until then, everyone, remember a few things. Number one, never fall asleep next to a vampire spawn. They will try to suck your blood without your permission. Number two, stay as far away from tadpoles as possible. They're evil creatures that will go right into your brain without your permission. Uh, let's see. Number three, stay away from anyone at a camp in a fantasy setting. Everyone will try to sleep with you without your permission. At least that's what we learned from this playthrough, correct? And by the way, for God's sake, stay away from druids because they're, they're, it's ridiculous. You're going to end up in a romantic relationship with them even against your will. Okay? Seriously, I mean it. You got to look out for yourself in this life, man. This is the things we've learned from Baldur's Gate 3. Also, there's one other final thing that I need to leave you all with. Is Go! Grind. It's the last time we'll say your god forsaken name. You scumbag piece of living trash. And now you're dead, so now you're dead trash. Oh, gold grind. Thank you for letting me sing your song. I am the bard of gold grind. But for now, it's time to say. So long. Bye bye.